Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, I want to talk to y'all about LeBron James and JJ Reddick podcast. It's a new podcast right now, man. It's going to be successful just based off of it being LeBron James' most recent podcast. And of course, having JJ Reddick sitting alongside him to be his co-host. Now, the reason why LeBron James and J.J. Reddick started this podcast was to pretty much start talking about the X's and O's of basketball. You got guys like Stephen A. Smith, Brian Winhurst, and other people on ESPN. A lot of people is just jealous of this podcast. Even Draymond Green had came out and made some comments that LeBron James had to respond to because, you know, it's going to create a narrative around that, right? So let's get into what Draymond Green had to say about LeBron James and J.J. Reddick's podcast. Here's a video. I must say I am a little um, upset that LeBron James is like going on a podcast and he still haven't been on a Draymond Green show. Uh, but when it's your own thing, you kind of can't say anything. So I guess I'll live with it for now. Pick the bone with him that I got to pick with him later. So that's what Draymond Green had to say, right? And LeBron James quickly responded to that. He had left a comment with some laughing emojis saying that Draymond Green knows that I'm going to do his podcast. So LeBron, he had to do that to quickly stop a narrative because, you know, a lot of more people was probably going to pile on and say, yeah, he didn't do my podcast yet. So, yeah, man, you know, this is a business venture as well, which is what Draymond Green has said in that video, which is why he's saying he's not going to trip as much because he know it's business at the end of the day with LeBron and J.J. Reddick. Stephen A. Smith and Brian Whithurst had some things to say about it as well. Brian Whithurst had this to say about LeBron James' podcast. Let's check it out right here. I haven't changed the game, dude. Huh? Have you been since 2005? Huh? Yeah, no, we talk about all time, bro. Like, okay, well, even, it's joy. Okay, so if we're going all time me, outside of let me ask you a question. Still, still let me ask you a question. Okay, but he, what number Brian Windhorst? He didn't say outside Does of LeBron James wear? Thank Twenty-three. You. What what number does LeBron James wear? Thank you. And why does he wear it? Look, the reason I find this hilarious is because <laughs> LeBron and JJ started this podcast because they were tired of watching on TV discussions about like LeBron versus Jordan. They wanted like a more higher level discussion about pick the picker and screen the screener and stuff. And what comes out of the first podcast? A discussion about LeBron and Jordan. No. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he's asking about influential. LeBron Jordan, LeBron was, was influenced by Michael Jordan by almost more than anybody until he got to be, like, be 17 years old. He wears number 23. Right. I mean. But you understand what he's saying, though, right? Yes, I understand. I, 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 they did have an influence, and they were powerful. The entire, the entire NBA. Well, and and like also, Stephen like, is, is this they just. They play like Stephen Curry. And influence was probably. It, that's a specifically chosen word, so that it's not the greatest. This is so JJ. You always the... got to be careful about guys from Duke. Remember that little light-skinned <laughs> came in the league? <laughs> that's in Golden State. <laughs> He changed that whole narrative. He did. He singly hand, single handedly changed the no lead is safe. It's like it's like Pat Mahomes right now. It's interesting you bring up Steph because I think there's love that guy. A love long that. history of Steph. great players mm -hmm. that have impacted the game. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lineage between different skill sets, right? Uh, Michael to Kobe, yep. right? You can you can see that. Yep. I don't know that there's been a player that has influenced the game more than Steph. And you can certainly point to like Harden yeah. for sure in that era, Damian Lillard for sure. But it, you're right; it started with no, Steph. The, when it comes to influence, since since I've been watching the game, since I've been watching the game, the most influence on the game. And obviously, we know what Mike did for the game. Sure. You know, well, Steph and Allen Iverson are the, the two biggest influential guys in our game since, since I've been watching and covering it. Okay, so as we can see, Brian Winhurst is trying to start a narrative saying that J.J. Redick set LeBron James up. And as we can see, guys, these guys are already starting narratives based off of one episode. Stephen A. Smith created his own narrative about LeBron James and J.J. Redick podcast. And he had to insert himself in it some way, somehow. And you know how Stephen A. Smith does, man. He tried to act like LeBron James went 007 or something just to create this podcast with J.J. Reddick to blindside Stephen A. Smith and other people. And Stephen A. Smith is acting like he's not going to fall for the trick. But let's check out what Stephen A. Smith had to say about LeBron James and J.J. Reddick's new podcast. Here's the video. Be sure to hit that like button for me if you haven't already. That helps this YouTube channel continue to grow. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Stay up to date with all of my current YouTube videos. Peace. And their problem is they're so damn sensitive most of the time. 
And they're so dismissive and aloof because they're not talking to somebody they consider on their level, they don't want to talk about it as opposed to taking an opportunity to actually teach the game. Now LeBron has put his words, his bravado, his stature, his money, figuratively speaking, where his mouth is. He is showing you right there elements of the game that the average basketball fan can't possibly think about or see because we're fixated on a finished product as opposed to the nuances surrounding the game, what goes into it, and what ultimately leads to success. But having said all of that, let me be the first to say LeBron James was a little bit slick here too. Brilliantly slick, I might add, because he could have had that conversation on uninterrupted. He could have been talking to Maverick Carter. He could have been talking to Rich Paul. He could have been talking to his crew of boys. But he chose to do this with J.J. Redick. Who is J.J. Redick? One of the great shooters in the history of the game who had a 15-year-plus career in the NBA, who is now a color commentator, a part of the A-team with Mike Breen and Doris Burke on ABC and ESPN games, who's also a contributor to my daytime job, First Take, along with other shows, not to mention the fact he's got his own podcast, The Old Man and the Three, which is very popular. So what happens is when you get with somebody like a JJ who knows the game, who's a brilliant basketball mind, but can be a bit truculent or acerbic at times when somebody he believes is ignorant is in his face talking about the game, to have a voice like that serves LeBron in a multitude of ways because it provides him cover from the regular discourse that would serve to criticize or sully his name in any way because he don't want to do it. He believes that's beneath him. So he got with somebody that'll do it for him. Not to say that's what J.J. signed on for, not to say that's what J.J. is about. I'm just saying that J.J. knows the game and he is quick to check anybody who thinks they know stuff they don't know about the game of basketball. It's a brilliant move on LeBron James' part. Very slick and it will work like heaven against everybody except me. It won't work. When you go out on that wing and you jacking up shots you don't need to jack up or you're hesitant about getting to the free throw line or you're choosing to shoot a, shoot a fall away jump shot instead of taking it to the hole and being that man amongst boys that you are, J.J. ain't going to be able to help you there, no matter what he says. And so when I was looking at Stephen A. Smith top comments, a lot of people in his own audience was calling him out. This is legitimately sad. Oh, they want to uplift the game of basketball, have real discourse. That won't stop me from gossiping about nonsense. We know Stephen A. We know. I think Stephen A. Smith, for some reason, thinks people listen to him for his basketball insight rather than the fact that he's simply just entertaining. Nobody think he's a basketball savant but himself. Laugh my ass off. No way Stephen A. made this even remotely about himself. Y'all get in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts about today's video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe for more self-talk videos. And we out, guys. Peace.